pump, pump, pump it up. Let's try to find some new books. Don't ever invite me to a club or you'll be seeing those awful dance moves again. said this a million times before that these videos take so much time to film so much time to edit I just need all the energy I can get hey my friends welcome to a brand new video my name's Olivia or Liv if you've never been here before welcome to my channel today I'm gonna be sharing some new book releases that I am personally very very excited for July what comes after July August and September. In previous years, I've compiled all the books I'm excited about within one year, within one video, but I learned real quick that there's a lot of releases and I don't want to come out with like a movie length video. So this is going to be the third quarter of the year, which is the latter half of summer. And guys, there's so, so, so many books new books, amazing books that I am excited for. The past two videos I've had some pretty good exciting books coming out but this is probably my favorite time of year because once you get into fall and Christmas there's not quite as many new releases that I'm excited for but for some reason it's within these three months that I feel like every year without fail there's always amazing books. So before we get started I am not going to be like categorizing these very much or in depth or telling you guys like the dates they're coming out but I am going to divide this into July, August, and September. Also you can probably predict that these are going to be mainly fantasy and mostly mystery thrillers. I do have a couple graphic novels sprinkled throughout, maybe a middle grade or two, but these are mainly mystery thrillers and fantasy. If you're not into either of those genres, you can go ahead and move on, click off of this video. I will not be offended at all, but just so you guys know what to expect in this video. I also just wanted to say real quick that I'm not gonna be going super into depth with reading the whole synopsis or any of all of these books because there's just way too much to get into with these, but I'm mainly gonna be telling you why I'm interested in them, why I'm gonna be spending my pennies, like what about these books thrills me to pick them up or motivates me or what intrigues me to pick these books up. So let's go ahead and just dive right into July with a graphic novel, a second volume that I am so excited for. Lore Olympus 2 is coming out, you guys, and I loved the first one. I will say the artwork wasn't my favorite style. I feel like it could have been fleshed out a little bit more. There is some other graphic novels that I prefer as far as that aspect goes, but the story left off on such a cliffhanger. I was actually debating if I wanted to pick up the second one, but as time went on and I read the first one completely, I just fell in love with it. So if you don't know anything about this, this is a Persephone, Hades, kind of like I guess reimagining or retelling. This was originally on webtoons, I believe, and then it finally got published into real physical novels. So for obvious reasons, I'm super excited to pick up the second one. The first mystery thriller that really caught my eye, it just sounds very unique but also humorous, is The Paul Bears Club by Paul Tremblay. I've never actually read anything by this author before. I believe this comes out at the very beginning of the month on July 5th, but this book is set during the 80s, which I am in this weird 80s phase era right now because of Stranger Things, and this just makes me even more stoked to pick this up. But this is like a weird friendship between two characters where the male actually volunteers to be a pallbearer in the community. He has started this club called the Paul Bearers Club. I'm not really sure what that means, but there's a girl that joins and brings her Polaroid and takes pictures of the corpses, which is a little bit weird, a little bit odd, but some weird things I think end up happening and some folklore is also involved in this. It's a very jam-packed synopsis with a bunch of keywords or trigger words or buzzwords I guess you could say that really had me enthused about picking this one up. It says a cleverly voiced psychological thriller about an unforgettable and unsettling friendship with blood chilling twists, crackling wit, and a thrumming pulse in its veins. Even though I may purchase this or pre-order it the day it comes 
comes out. I feel like this is just going to be one that I end up keeping for spooky fall season. The next book that honestly kind of gives me a little bit of Finley Donovan vibes, as well as My Lovely Wife by Samantha Downing. In this book, we have two sisters, and one is actually a notorious serial killer. I think she actually passes away, the serial killer does, and her sister has always dealt with this guilt of knowing who her sister really is. So she ends up joining this club of amateur sleuths that I think are obsessed with solving crimes or cases in their town. They find out one day that there is a victim that has left a note that incriminates or points to this girl. The cover vibes give me a little bit of playfulness to this for some reason, but I really don't know what to expect otherwise with this book. I think it's very unique that there's like this sister duo that one has been a serial killer and the other like helps her cover up the bodies. It just sounds crazy weird, but I love a good sister dynamic, so that's what kind of enthused me to pick this one up, and yeah, we're just gonna see how it goes. This whole book or premise just sounds really unique and perfect for people that love true crime like I do. The next book I have is very creepy and unsettling. This cover just weirds me out to no end. I've also heard very strange things about this author. I've never read anything by this author, but I love the fact that this is an atmospheric retelling of Edgar Allan Poe, The Fall of the House of Usher. I've never actually dove deep or read The Fall of the House of Usher, but I have a feeling I'm really going to want to do a deep dive or read that before I read this book, just to kind of compare. I love doing that with books or movies or retellings. It's just something that I think is really fun. So when Alex Easton, a retired soldier, receives word that their childhood friend Madeline Usher is dying, they race to the ancestral home of the Ushers in the remote countryside of Ruritania. So obviously this is going to include a haunting house, I think, of some sort. It's set on a lake and there's also illnesses and sicknesses and strange voices in the night and I don't know what to expect from this but again this is going to be another perfect perfect book I think to pick up during the fall. For obvious reasons, The It Girl by Ruth Ware is also on my list. Ruth Ware is a giant hit or miss for me, so I may step back for a little while just to see some reviews of how this one is going. I do know that for my friend Lauren, this is a very long book. I think it's over 400 pages, which is crazy for a mystery thriller. Typically, they are right at 300-ish pages. I'm a little bit skeptical about this one and I honestly know nothing about it. I kind of want to go into it blind because of that reason, but I do know this does have a friendship dynamic where one friend actually goes missing or she's murdered. I'm not sure which, but then the other friend ends up searching for her and trying to figure out what happened to her. I think like a decade or so later. It sounds a little bit different from Ruth Ware's other books, but I think this one's going to be very unique and I think there is going to be a lot of different aspects to this book that may be a little bit different from her previous ones, which also has me very intrigued. Apparently, a lot of these books are going to be really good for fall because the next on my list that I just added recently the other day is They Drown Our Daughters by Katrina Monroe. And what really had me intrigued from the first line is it says this is for Jennifer McMahon and Sylvia Moreno Garcia fans. And while I haven't read anything by Sylvia, I really think that I'm going to love this one because I love Jennifer for McMahon, and this actually reminds me of The Wicked Deep. The synopsis is very intriguing about there's this deep dark water where there's ghost stories surrounding it, there's bad things happening, there's tourists that come that don't believe in this town's myths surrounding the water, and I really don't know what's gonna happen. The synopsis does not give much away, and I do want to go into this one blind as well, but just know if you're fans of Jennifer McMahon, and if you've read The Wicked Deep like I have, I really hope this has some good atmospheric creepy vibes. The next book I have is actually a middle grade book called Grave Books by J.A. White. I've read Night Books and really, really enjoyed it. The audio was super creepy, especially for a middle grade. I still have yet to watch the movie, actually, but I think this is a companion novel. I don't think it's a actual sequel or a number two, but I do know that we go back into the same world with the same main character and he gets haunted again by witches and creepy things in the night. I think I might have to go back and read the first book though or at least watch the movie before I read the second book because my memory is a little bit fuzzy on some of the details 
but I'm really looking forward to this. Again, just sticking with the spooky trend. Maybe this is a lot of spooky books to add to your TBR, but I'm slowly dipping my toes into spooky middle grade, especially for fall, and I think this one is really gonna be perfect for me. This next book is absolutely my number one top book that I will be picking up. I'm gonna go into Barnes & Noble that day to get it when it releases is Daisy Darker by Alice Feeney. I know nothing about this book other than it has and then there were none vibes as well as I think it takes place in kind of an isolated setting which I absolutely love and adore. I'm not gonna look at the synopsis or read the synopsis but you guys can look this one up. I really just want to go into this one blind. Honestly I think Alice Feeney is like the queen of plot twists because every single book that I have read I have not seen the ending coming or there's been multiple twists that just completely throw me off guard and I'm really confident that this one will have the same thing. I love her atmosphere, I love her writing. If you have not picked up a book by Alice Feeney before, I really recommend just about almost any of her books. So I hope you guys are as excited about this one as I am. The next book I have is called The Very Secret Society of Irregular Witches. This is actually an adult kind of fantasy romance, but it's also a little bit of contemporary paranormal. There's some magic. There's really a lot that I think is going to be packed into this book. I really cannot wait to pick it up. As one of the few witches in Britain, Mika Moon knows she has to hide her magic, keep her head down, and stay away from other witches so their powers don't mingle and draw attention. And as an orphan who lost her parents at a young age and was raised by strangers, she's used to being alone and she follows the rules, with one exception. An online account where she posts videos pretending to be a witch. She thinks no one will take it seriously but someone does. An unexpected message arrives, begging her to travel to the remote and mysterious nowhere house to teach three young witches how to control their magic. It breaks all of the rules, but Mika goes anyway and is immediately tangled up in the lives and secrets of not only her three charges, but also an absent archaeologist, a retired doctor, two long-suffering caretakers, and Jamie, the handsome and prickly librarian. So this just sounds like a whole lot of fun. I don't know what all this book is going to include, but it sounds like some mischief and it sounds like a whole lot of fun and I really hope that this book holds up to the hype for me because once again this looks like the perfect fall book. Another book that's on my list is actually a sequel that I have not read the first book to yet is A Venom Dark and Sweet. These covers you guys are absolutely chef's kiss. I really want to get this edition from Barnes & Noble like I did with the first one because the end pages are absolutely stunning. I'm not going to read the synopsis of this one because I have yet to still read the first one, but this is a book that I know for sure I'm going to love because it's specifically for tea lovers, it's fantasy, and I think it also has to do with a possible tournament and lots of magic involved that have to do with tea or like some type of tea challenge, but this is one that has been on my list for quite some time now. I bought this like the day it came out, and I think this book comes out August 23rd, so I do still have some time in August to read the first one, and then maybe I'll just go ahead and binge the second. Next, we have another really creepy looking graphic novel called Over My Dead Body by Sweeney Boo. I don't think I've actually heard of this author's name before. I am going to read the synopsis because it sounds extremely in-depth for a graphic novel. First of all, this is for fans of Sabrina, which I think is most of us, so that's what really made me interested in this one. In the days leading up to Samhain, the veil between the world of the dead and the living is at its thinnest. One day, everything was exactly as it was supposed to be, and the next, the closest thing Abby ever had to a sister, Noreen, was just gone. Distracted by the annual preparations for the Samhain festival, Abby's classmates are quick to put Noreen's disappearance aside. The coven will find her, Abby's friend says. They have it under control, but Abby can't let it go. So we not only have like a magic Institute that sounds amazing but it's also like a mystery or possibly a murder mystery so it sounds perfect for me there's so many vibes to this book and I'm so here for it I just really hope that it doesn't let me down next I have a another sequel and this time I have read the first book I read all of us villains recently but the second book is called all of our demise by Amanda foodie while I did think the first one was pretty close to like a 
the Hunger Games knockoff. I really did enjoy the magic system and there's a pretty decent plot at the end of this book that definitely has me intrigued to pick up the second one. I wouldn't say it's super high on my list, but if you guys love the Hunger Games, if you guys like fantasy, or even if you don't, this was a pretty simple magic system to understand. There's quite a few plot twists in here as well. So seriously, if you love the Hunger Games or you're in a Hunger Games mood, go ahead and pick this one up because I really enjoyed it, especially the audiobook. It's a full cast of characters. I think there's four different viewpoints, which did get a little bit confusing for me as well. But hopefully the second book will be just as good as the first one, and I think this is going to be a trilogy, but I'm not quite sure. The next book I have that is also coming out in August is The Spear Cuts Through Water by Simon Jimenez. I honestly cannot remember what clued me in or piqued my interest with this one, other than it's a fantasy, adult high fantasy. I've been trying to get into adult fantasy more, and it's published by Tor. Tor is such an amazing publishing company. I love almost everything that they publish, and so I I really want to get my hands on this one, but it definitely gave me Six of Crow vibes. We have three different characters that embark on this five day journey to try to take over this moon throne, and I really don't know what to expect from it other than that, but the cover just reminds me of like a middle grade cover of some sort. It just looks very summery and just, I don't know. I'm a cover buyer, you guys. If I see a good looking cover, it immediately sucks me in. I think this author has also come out with another book in the past or quite a few, but I have never heard of them otherwise. So I'm very excited to give this author a shot. Last but definitely not least, most people I'm assuming are anticipating the next Taylor Jenkins Reid book called Carrie Soto is back. Taylor Jenkins Reid has this knack for giving me a main character, whether they're a celebrity or, you know, it's historical or whatever it is, something that I wouldn't typically pick up. She somehow sucks me in with her characters and her writing, and I am just fully invested somehow in almost all of her books that I read. And this one sounds especially interesting because it is about a retired tennis player that wants to come back and get her head back in the game and start competing again. So I don't know what in the world kind of past this character has to make them retire. Maybe they retired early. I don't know how old our main character is. It's Taylor Jenkins Reid, so of course I'm gonna pick it up. I've been hearing nothing but amazing reviews about this one so far, and I can't wait to get my hands on it. We finally reached the month of September, and the first book coming out in September that I am definitely gonna be buying ASAP is Stephen King's fairy tale. Oh my gosh. Next to Daisy Darker, this is probably my second book that I'm anticipating. This is Stephen King's first adult fantasy book. Um, say no less, I'm there. This has to do with a 17 year old boy who finds this portal into another world where good and evil is at stake. This also gives me like weird secret garden like spooky vibes. I don't know what to expect from this one. I feel like most people don't, but the fact that it's Stephen King, he already writes very detailed and I'm used to that with fantasy. So I really think he's going to pull this off and do it well. Let me know what you guys think though, because because I am a little bit concerned with him being more of a horror writer. Maybe that's a good thing and the suspense will be good. I am just so hyped to see what this is going to be like. I have no idea if this is one he's been working on for a while or what's going to go down in this book, but I am just so thrilled with this one. The next spooky book that I'm so excited to pick up, but also a little bit nervous because I typically don't read books that have short stories, but I think this is going to be really fun for fall especially with this cover. It's called The Gathering Dark, an anthology of folk horror. I think it sounds really cool, maybe a little bit more gothic. I'm just gonna read the synopsis of some of these short stories because it sucked me in. It says, A cemetery full of the restless dead, a town so wicked it has already burned twice with the breath of the third fire looming, a rural isolated bridge with a terrifying monster waiting for the completion of its summoning ritual, a lake that allows the drowned to return though they have been changed by the claws of death, hauntings and a variety of horrifying secrets lurk 
work in the places we once called home. Does that not just sound fantastic? It sounds a little bit paranormal, maybe magical realism. I am very excited for this one, especially the fact because it's young adult. I don't typically read adult horror and I feel like this will be a little bit on the lighter side, hopefully, as far as spooky vibes and gore. Probably my third one on this list as far as excitement goes is Angelica Frankenstein Makes Her Match by Sally Thorne. So I actually DNF'd The Hating Game. I watched the movie. I didn't like the movie much more than I liked whatever I read of the book, but this sounds amazing, you guys. It's a historical rom-com that imagines Victor Frankenstein's sheltered younger sister in her attempts to create the perfect man. Does that just not sound thrilling, hilarious, cute? I love Frankenstein so much. This is one of my favorite spooky time stories, and I'm just so hyped to see what in the world is gonna go down in this one. I love that it's historical, because I've also been in like this weird Regency, like Bridgerton vibe. I'm kind of craving a little bit of that in my books. So I think this one is just gonna be so much fun. Maybe I'll do a reading vlog on this one, but yeah. This is a very popular author, so I have a feeling a lot of people are going to be excited for this one as well. Next, I have a, another sequel, but this also says it's not number two on Goodreads, so maybe this is more of like a companion novel, but it's a graphic novel called Garlic and the Witch by Brie Paulson. I loved Garlic and the Vampire. It was so cute and perfect for fall. If you guys have not read that one, definitely pick it up. I don't know what's going to happen in this one, but I do know the witch in the previous book actually tends to the garden with all these little vegetables. So I'm sure there's going to be a ton more hilarious moments. I'm sure Garlic is going to be this amazing person that overcomes her anxiety. She was so relatable in Garlic and the Vampire. I just have a feeling I'm going to love this one as well. So if you have not read the other one, definitely put it on your radar because this is going to be so cute. Next on my list is one that I am so freaking excited for you guys. It is called Marple, 12 New Mysteries. As you guys know, Miss Marple, I think, is actually a detective or has something to do with Agatha Christie. I think there's like Miss Marple volumes or books, but this is a short story collection written by Lee Bardugo, Lucy Foley, Alyssa Cole, Karen McManus, Ruth Ware, Natalie Haynes, like hello, there's so many good mystery thriller authors, fantasy authors that are gonna share their stories in this book and I need it right now. I just need to know how these authors interpret Agatha Christie, what kind of murder mysteries or things we're trying to solve, Lee Bardugo, Ruth Ware, all of the popular authors are going to be writing for this one. The next book is honestly kind of confusing, so don't hold me to this. This may actually be coming out in 2023 and not actually this year, but I am just going by Goodreads, and Goodreads says September 15th, but when I went to go pre-order this book, there's no cover. I had a hard time finding it, and it said it would be released in 2023. So I'm not really sure if Goodreads has it wrong, which is probably the case, but I thought I would go ahead and put it on y'all's radar. It is Stone Blind Medusa Story by Natalie Haynes. I am slowly kind of easing myself into Greek mythology lately. It's a topic or a genre that I've always had an interest in, but just don't know really where to start and Medusa I feel like I am the most familiar with as far as the mythology goes and I am just so pumped about this book. I know this author also wrote A Thousand Ships and a few other books that I think are really popular as far as that genre goes. This cover is also absolutely stunning. I love a good orange and teal together and I think this is just basically a retelling of Medusa's story. So if you guys are into Greek mythology, again I'm not sure if this actually comes out this year, but you may want to actually put it on your radar. Last but definitely not least, the Queen Lee Bardugo is coming out with yes a graphic novel you guys about the darkling and i am so stoked for this before he led ravka's second army before he created the fold and long before he became the darkling he was just a lonely boy burdened by an extraordinary power eric and his mother lena have spent their lives on the run they will never find a safe haven they are not only grisha they are the deadliest and rarest of their kind feared by those who wish to destroy them and hunted by those who would exploit their gifts they must hide their true abilities where Ever they go but sometimes deadly secrets have a way of revealing themselves I have no doubt that this is gonna be amazing it's set 
in the Grishaverse. The cover already shows me that this is just going to be such great artwork and it's a shadow and bone graphic novel. I'm very interested to know why this isn't being made into an actual novel, but I'm here for it because it's Lee Bardugo and it's a graphic novel. So of course I'm going to read it. Okay friends, well there you have it. There is my most anticipated releases for July, August, and September. I had no clue when I was putting this list together that there's going to be so many fall vibe books, but honestly I'm not mad about it. Fall is like prime reading season for a lot of people, so hopefully I was able to add some to your list for the fall to pick up. Thank you so much for sticking around and supporting my channel and watching this whole video. If you did stick around the whole time, would you please leave me the book stack emoji because there's a lot of good books coming out this year and I'm just so 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 excited this year is going to be such a great one. Thank you so much for watching. I love you guys so much and I will see you in my next video.